Money Show. Personal Finance with Warren Ingram. Talking personal finance tonight and how much should you save? Now, here's a question that's very difficult for us South Africans because most of us just need to get through the month and we get to the end of the month and there's one little biscuit left and it's payday in two days' time and we've got to divide that biscuit by five because we have to feed the family. That's what happens. But sometimes you need to put more thought into it and perhaps cut back on your expenditure. Well, of course, joining us to discuss this is Warren Ingram, who's the co-founder of Galileo Capital. Warren, it has been years since I've chatted to you. It's uh, so, so good to chat again, Ray. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. It's been a long time. All right, you heard my introduction, saving and saving. What should you be doing? So, so I mean, the, the temptation when you ask uh, someone like me this question is always to say, you know, you, you can never train enough if you were asking a personal trainer or eat enough healthy food if you were asking the doctor. <laughs> uh, yeah. but, but I think you've, you've got to strike the balance, Ray, uh, you know, and, and get, uh, you know, get the balance between life, you know, and, and, and living from day to day and enjoying what it is that you do uh, and then saving for your future self. So, so telling people to save as much as they possibly can is simply not a good enough answer. We, you know, I think we need to, we need to kind of break down our, our, our income as it comes in and, and, and give certain categories of, of income, you know, priority when we're looking at our savings and, and then we can kind of get, get to a path. So, so I'm not giving you a straight answer because there, there isn't one, but, but the, mm. the starting point is if you're early in your career, and and you you need to give yourself a goal. I, I would say that uh, you, you know if you're happy, you know in your in your mid twenties to to kind of uh, save fifteen percent of everything you earn, and and that means for every hundred rand that you're being paid before deduction, so before your you, you see on your pay slip the money that goes to tax and to your retirement funds and all that stuff, uh, fifteen out of every hundred rand should go to savings. If you're happy to keep working until your age 65, uh, if, if that's, if that's what you're comfortable doing, then, then save 15 out of every hundred rand and, and well done and just keep going. Uh, as you earn more money, you know, set aside 15 out of every hundred rand and you'll be okay. But 15, if you talk to people, sure, yeah. you know, but, but as you know, Ray, uh, you, you talk to people in their mid twenties and they'll tell you that there is absolutely no chance that they want to keep working to 65. They want to retire early and, and, you know, and, and, and relatively young. Uh, and, and, you know, in my view, if you're in that position, then you need to say to yourself, okay, I'm going to save 33 rand out of every hundred. Uh, and, and that will probably get you to the point where you can retire at age 55 and do whatever it is that you want. You know, re- retirement is a ridiculous concept nowadays. We, you know, we kind of need to talk about financial freedom more so. Uh, and, and so, you know, you know, that's probably the range. And very few people will, will be able to save 33 out of, out of every hundred, but, but it depends on your goals and what you're willing to do. Warren, when you go and you do that and you save that, where do you put the money? Because you want a high return. You want to make sure that you are biting the bullet here. You are taking one that, you know, you have to tighten that belt. Where do you put that cash so that you just make sure it's really worth it? I think it's such a fabulous point because a lot of people view that money, uh, you know, correctly as really hard earned. And the last thing they want to do is lose it. And, 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 you know, that I understand, but what they end up doing is they go for certainty. Uh, and, and in the investment world, certainty is probably the most expensive thing you can do because certainty means that you're putting your money into cash. You know, you're, you're locking in uh, an interest rate uh, on, on, on a money market account or on a fixed deposit or something like that where Every day and every month, you look at your account and you'll see that it never goes down, um, and it feels good in the early days because you know it, it, it's just gone up and up and up. And you know everyone else who's stressing about their money that's rising or falling with stock markets or whatever it is, you, you feel great because you've got certainty. Unfortunately, that certainty is expensive because what it tells you is you're not going to keep pace with inflation. When you put your money in fixed deposits or bank accounts or you know high, high interest accounts, uh, once you deduct the, the tax that you have to pay on that interest, you can be certain that your money is not keeping pace with inflation. So the buying power of your money is going down 
every single day and there is no headline uh no, no kind of you know kind of person like me screaming on the radio to say gee your money's losing value it, it just yeah. happens <laughs> slowly but surely so so the answer ray is you've got to take the risk and and risk in this instance is be responsible and allocate as much as you possibly can to kind of diversified stock market investments. You, you've got to be in the stock markets with the roller coaster ride to be certain that, that you're going to beat inflation over a decade or two. That, that, that's the unfortunate part about, about investing is you can't buy certainty over the short term. But also the depreciation of the RAND. And I remember back in the 1980s, our family bond was something like 600 rand a month. Well, it's not the case like that anymore. You'd, I would think, have to take that into account because the rand does get weaker and weaker. And it has firmed a bit over the past so two weeks or so, but that's just the past two weeks. You, you're right. And, and, you know, in the time frame that you're talking about, you know, the, the last two weeks over a kind of, you know, ne- nearly 50 year period is almost irrelevant. And, and, and so, you know, just to give an idea, Ray, that, you know, if you look at the Rand versus the US dollar, and, and that makes sense because it's the world's biggest trading currency, uh, the, the Rand loses about 6% uh, a year over time to, to the US dollar. So w- when you're investing in, in the stock market, um, you know, I think you make a valid, a valid point. You, you can't just look at the JAC. Uh, you, you, you should look at blending your, your local stock market exposure with global stock markets and, and at least benefiting from that RAND depreciation over long periods of time. It, it's not to say that the, the JSE won't deliver a good return as well. I think, you, you know, when emerging markets come back into f- uh, f- favor again, and, and believe it or not, they will do that one day. I'm, I'm not sure if it's tomorrow or, n- or next year or the year after, but they will. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, th- th- then, you know, the, the Measuring the JSE, even in dollar terms, you know, you, you might see some good returns again. But until that time, you, you want to spread your eggs across many different baskets to use that worn cliche. And, and I, I think, you know, a, a global stock market investment combined with a, a local stock market investment is probably the best way you can go. We're chatting to Warren Ingram, who's the co-founder of Galileo Capital, talking about how much should you save. Perhaps you do have a WhatsApp voice note message or just a message for Warren, and maybe you have a question for him. The Money Show. Personal Finance with Warren Ingram. So, Warren, talking tonight about how much you should save, perhaps there should be mandatory regulations. You look at pensions and provident funds, and they've got the, this whole new system now, which goes into three. But perhaps we should have the same thing about saving just to protect us. Uh, it's a it's a brilliant point. It's not it's not popular when you talk about it uh, be, be, yeah. because no one wants to be told what to do with their savings. But if you look at uh, the countries around the world where, where, where people are good savers, uh, th- th- there's almost a hundred percent correlation with the fact that they are forced by, by, by law to save. And, and so, you know, if you want to create a savings culture, what, I mean, the easiest way is to oblige employers to take a portion of, of their employee salaries and, and pay it directly into a, a, a retirement or savings vehicle. Uh, and, and it can be done as a gradual thing, but, but what can't be done is it shouldn't be voluntary because unfortunately, you know, as human beings, we, we don't always do what's good for us. You know, that, that's why there are lots of people who, who, you know, you know, kind of deal with syntaxes all the time because they do the things that are not good for them. Uh, and, and so if you force people to save that they don't like it in the early days, but by the time they get to their late fifties and their early sixties, they are almost always grateful. Uh, I think the trick, Ray, if you're going to do something like that, is you, you have to make sure that the, the the savings vehicles are transparent, they're low cost, they're, they're easy to access, and w- w- when the time comes, they're they're easy to you know to to use to pay out your income. You know, I think people don't want to be ripped off, and they, they don't want to be in opaque vehicles where money's being stolen or something like that. So, if you can yeah. make it transparent and easy uh, and and obligatory, then then people start to save, and the more they save, the the, the more positive they get about uh, about their savings and the, and and their kind of financial freedom. Yeah. One or two SMSs, one from Sandra in Joburg. She says, good evening, Warren. How do I know which is the best local stock markets? Investment-wise, um, I would think. Where to put your money if you want to save? I think that's what she's trying to say. 
Yeah. So, so uh, um, I, I, I think th- th- there are probably two. You know, uh, it's it, you know, no, no surprise, uh, Ray, and I haven't changed my tune over the years, but I, I still think the index <laughs> is a great place to to go when you don't know what to do. You know, if you buy the the whole stock market, you know, and and, and the 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 answer, Sandra, is this. You know, something called the all share index, and and if you buy that, you know, that th- that will be the the whole of the stock market, and and typically. Buying that will cost you in the region uh, so somewhere around 0.3 or 0.4% a year in fees. Um, you know, it, it, it'll be something that's built into the cost of the, of the index tracker and you can buy those nowadays as an exchange traded fund or unit trust. Uh, and, and to me, that's a really good way to go because you, you don't have to be a, a share picking expert or a market timer. You just buy it every single month and, and, you know, forget about it for five or 10 years. And when you open your statements one day, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And then Sabu says, yeah, hi, Ray, if I wanted to say through an investment unit trust, how do I go about choosing the right one? And Sabu goes on to speak about saving for his children's education, because that's also saving as well, saving for the rainy day or saving for education. Uh, I, I love the question, Sabu. I, I mean, I think... Uh, you know, if you, you so some of the unit trust companies will will have minimums, and, and they're kind of in the region of 300 to 500 rand a month. So, so you can run a debit order off your bank account and and go straight into the the unit trust. Uh, and and again, if your children are young and and you want to save for the education, you know, you can consider a stock market investment as well. So, so you know, also using an an, an all share index or a top fifty, uh, you know, kind of an index tracker. Um, as long as you, you've got at least five years to save, you know. So if your if your kids are are young now and and you want to save for for high school, uh, th- then by all means, you know, put it put it in the stock market because your time frame is long enough. And, and unfortunately, if your kids are go- going to school next year or the year after, th- then you're going to have to bite the bullet and and just put it into um, uh, something like a money market unit trust because your time frame is so short. Uh, for, for, for when you're going to need the money that you can't afford to take stock market risk. So, so anytime your time horizon is longer than five years, you can look at the stock market. When it's short, then unfortunately you need to go for the, the, the certainty. And, and as we discussed at the start of the show, you know, that, that's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit of a lower return, but, but you need that money soon. So you, you can't take the stock market volatility risk. Yeah, I think, Warren, it does it not come to just trimming the fat. And perhaps people need to sit down, look at their personal budgets and ask the question, where can I cut and where can I move money into saving? Perhaps that's a good place to start. Um, I'm going to I'm going to g- g- give you a, a, a challenge. You know, wh- one of the things that's hard for us to do as human beings is we don't like uh, we, we don't like. Uh, cutting things you know we don't like to to deny ourselves uh, pleasure now you know for for something that's going to be good for us in the long term so i i I kind of give people the challenge to say find something that really motivates you that that really excites you you know it could be that you've got you know you know children that you want to care for or a loved one uh, or or it could be you know if you if you if you're not motivated by that for example a holiday and and so give yourself a goal to say you know if you really want to travel in a year's time then um for every 100 rand that you set aside for your long term savings you're allowed to set aside 10 rand for your holiday next year um and and if you give yourself kind of short term pleasure you know some something that's that, you know that's some kind of a short term goal it's much easier to work towards short term goals while you're then adding money to your long term savings because a, a lot of people w- would view you know their 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 self in 20 years time as a complete stranger they can't even picture that person so so they're not going to save for that person uh, but but if you can do short term things and 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 not view them as sacrificing or cutting out and and rather saying well I'm I'm making a positive decision uh, around you, you know kind of getting to this financial freedom it becomes easier psychologically to take the, the the necessary action, um, and and maybe one other quick trick there is you, yeah, you know if yeah. you if you don't have a gap in your budget uh, today, then give yourself the goal of saving ten bucks a week. Most of us, I'm not not saying everybody, but there are a lot of us out there that are earning some kind of a reasonable salary, whether it's a, you know fr- from a normal company or a gig or whatever it is, where you can save ten bucks a week. Uh, and in three months' time, see if you can jump that up by another ten bucks. And and 
you, you'll be surprised over time how much that those small little bits start to add up. And, and then all of a sudden you get to the point where you're able to save 5% of your income and then seven and then 10. And, you know, you can and phone go, in one day and say, yeah. thank you very much. I'm the millionaire. <laughs> that would be very nice. Here's another one. I'm looking at an SMS here talking about a bond and putting money into your bond in a flexi reserve. So you put it in and you're saving as you're going. Because most of us, Warren, we don't, we pay the, what we have to pay for our bonds and we leave it there. But paying it off early or putting more in helps as well. Also another form of saving. It's such a brilliant, uh, you know, strategy. I think if you've got a, in an access bond or whatever it's called nowadays, where, where you can put money in and, and draw out the, the extra that you've put in, uh, I, I view that, that, that uh, almost as a tax free saving. You know, if prime is currently, I think it's 11 and a half percent. Um, and, and if you're putting, you know, if you're paying off a mortgage at 11 and a half percent, any extra money that you're putting in, you're effectively saving yourself 11 and a half percent interest. And you're not paying tax on that because it's a, it's a saving of interest that you would be paying to someone else. So, so to me, it's almost a guaranteed return of 11 and a half percent a year without any tax. And, and so it's, it's, as close to a no-brainer as you can get, you know, once you've paid off your credit cards, your personal loans and your overdrafts, the next best thing you can do with your money is chuck it into the bond, you know, and you, you can always change your, your strategy later. You know, if prime drops down to 6% or something one day, you can redirect your money. But when it's sitting at over 10%, there, there is almost nothing else to do that, that I think other than pay off your bond. It's, it's the right action. Yeah, it's just discipline, isn't it? Discipline to make sure that you have to do this, realize that you have to save. And, and if you, if you struggle with this stuff, you know, set up debit orders and, and, and automate the savings and make it hard to spend. You know, so a lot of people would say, gee, I can't control my credit card. It always, you know, it always goes out of line on me, you know, through, through the month. You know, and the, the answer is, Disconnect your credit card from your app, so on, on your banking app on your on your phone, so that it's not so easy just to tap every month, and you know, and you know, yeah. kind of leave leave your credit card in the cupboard if you need to, you know, kind of one week of the uh, of the month, and, and make it harder to spend, and then do debit orders into savings, and make that easy to do. What a super super conversa uh, conversation tonight, Warren Ingram, co-founder of Galileo Capital, talking about saving. Warren, it's been great to chat to you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ray.